Welcome everyone, I'm Sean Brewer with Unilock. In this segment, we're gonna demonstrate an approach to estimating your hardscape projects that's truly accurate, efficient, and will help you win the right projects with the right profit. I'm personally passionate about this topic that we are calling price for profit. Because without your profit, your sustainability as a landscape and hardscape contractor, truly Unilock's profit and sustainability is in question. See, 100% of our R&D, 100% of our marketing, and the products we actually produce are for the landscape hardscape industry. We're not making and selling products to other industries across the world. We ride and die by the landscape contractor, and that's why we truly believe at our core, if we help lift up the landscape and hardscape contractor, we're bringing ourselves with you. And that's how, that is our approach to growth at Unilock. I'm joined by Weston from Synced Up. He's got a software that really helps in this area of profitability and sustainability within the landscape contractor. And I want to say thank you for being here. If you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Synced Up and how you guys got going. Yeah, thanks, Sean. It's good to be here. And uh, yeah, like you said, we are a software company, SyncedUp.com. But um, I'm a contractor like most of you watching. Um, basically spent my whole life in the green industry at a landscape company in Pennsylvania. And uh, we were, over the years, um, the company's been in business for 30 years, almost as long as I'm old. And uh, over the years, we were really passionate about uh, knowing our numbers and making sure that we were being profitable so that we could grow, so we could pay our people well, et cetera. And um, we'd use a number of the available pro you know, products on the market with softwares and they had spreadsheets. We, you know, we had the whole gamble that probably a lot of you deal with today. And we were like, there's gotta be a better way. And we were also like, this can't be just us dealing with this problem. This is, this is an industry problem. And so we started uh, kind of, the, you know, the light went on and we started developing a, an app and a software to make this super easy to not just know your numbers, but also make it really efficient and provide systems and processes for it. Really sounds like a homegrown idea, uh, kind of mashing things together yeah. and making <laughs> the, the software that you guys have developed. Yeah, it's just, you know, innovation is driven by need. Right, So absolutely. That's where it came from. Absolutely. Before we get into the whole price for profit method, we want to acknowledge what most contractors are using when estimating projects or where they usually start estimating their projects. And that's ultimately unit or per square foot pricing. Yeah. And what I like to actually call guest pricing because I believe you guys are guessing on what you should be charging and you're guessing at the profit at the end of the day. 100%. As a Unilock Territory Manager, Weston, I'm often asked, how much should I charge, 18 or $20 yeah. a square foot? And I always ask them a question right back at them. If you charge 18 or $20 a square foot, how much money will you have at the end of the year? Their face is white every time. What do you mean at the end of the year? How much will I, shouldn't you ask me how much I'll have at the end of the job? And I'll say, yeah, how much will you have at the end of the job? They have no idea. They yeah. can't answer that question, right? That's why we truly believe that unit pricing is guest pricing. It's mathematically impossible to know how much money you're going to make on every job and how much money you're going to make at the end of the year. You really need to change the approach to this. Now, with unit pricing, there is a small place where a landscape or hardscape contractor may use this method to help with their company, but it's never in the final bid stage. Well, you know... The reason unit pricing doesn't work is because like, it's, not every job is the same. I mean, you could have a job with really difficult access that dramatically makes it take longer. You could have a job with uh, curves versus straight lines, which also makes it take longer, but it's right. not really changing the square footage, yeah. right? This right. is why it doesn't work. But um, the place where you could use it is like when you're having that preliminary conversation with a client or a prospect and, you're, and they're trying to like, hey, I want a, a patio out here behind my back door and I want it this big. Like, what would it cost me? You can be like, well, you know, generally speaking, um, we'll get you a quote, but it'll fall in the range of, say, $20 to $35 a square foot. And notice the big range there. That's how I would use this whole unit or square pricing thing. It's like, give the client kind of an idea. Is it, this is not going to be $5,000. This is going to be $20,000 or $25,000, right. you know, and, and that's the time I would use that. But again, it's not on the actual quote that I submit to the client. It's in that preliminary conversation just to make sure that, their expectations are realistic, their budget is realistic, and we can move forward. Yeah, good point. And what we have found statistically proven when you use unit pricing, let's say you're using $20 a square foot, what you'll find is you'll stay busy all year long, but what you'll find is you'll actually get a lot of jobs that are under that profit range where you need to be, and you'll every so often get that one job where you made a ton of money right, that big wide open area, mm -hmm. but that one job with the walkway at 20 bucks a square foot, 
you actually lost a ton of money. So these unit prices, again, a magic formula that uh, ultimately doesn't drive the, the price for, for people. The last thing we're gonna be spending our majority of our time is this price for profit method. Weston's put together a great presentation where he'll be talking about this price for profit method and the steps needed to take from a landscape and hardscape contractor. And uh, I'll turn it over to you to kind of kick us off here. Okay, thank you. So yeah, as you can see behind us here, price for profit, that's what we're talking about. And one thing I wanna just say before I start going through the slides is, the reason I think most contractors kind of start with this like square foot pricing is because it is easy. You can literally take a calculator, measure it out, and like, boom, there's your price. Right. So what I want to try to do with these slides is to teach you how to do this and make it easy. So take what, what the reason you were doing square foot pricing because it's easy and try to make this method, which is the correct method, as easy as possible for you to just reduce that friction and actually encourage you to take action and actually make this reality for your own business. Yeah, get that accuracy and that efficiency exactly. that we're trying to, uh, to convey to you. Right? Yeah, because a lot of this is like a black box. Like, I don't understand how it works, and we're going to dig into like, what those points are, like why that would happen. So, you know, one thing I'm just going to get out of the way, you probably have seen this Facebook comment a hundred <laughs> times. What are you charging a square foot? Just don't even fall into this trap. I, I know we've kind of hit on this pretty good already, but I just wanted to bring that up. Let's get past that and we'll dive into what to do different. If you're three weeks in business, that right there is the probably one of the first steps you took. Yeah. And I want to let you know there's a lot of trolls that are going to mess with you and give you bad information. That's right. right. It's yeah. almost comical reading these comments yeah. on Facebook and Instagram. It, yeah, it, it's comic on there's you know, on the other hand it's sobering because I saw somebody uh, post like hey, you know, how was business for you this year? How it, how's it impacting your family life? And it was a guy just saying how you know most of the comments were like I barely got to saw them I didn't make enough money you know you know mm. all that stuff and that's really where this really kind of starts I know we're talking about this the dollar symbol up here but right. this is this is the motivation and the passion behind this is to help more landscape contractors hardscape contractors be successful in business to live the lives that you really we all want right good point so again my goal our goal is to help you take action to price your jobs profitably and show you how to do it so it's not like this black box and you're not sure what next step to take. Um, basically the formula to price jobs for profit consists of these three pieces. It's your cost, which is the cost you incur when you do the job. You don't have those costs if you don't do the job. And it's overhead. Those are the costs that you get right, whether you do the job or not, like it's your trucks, your equipment, your, your uh, shop rent, whatever that is. And then your profit. And so you add up costs, your overhead uh, markup, and your profit markup, and that will equal the customer's price. What happens is many people skip over the overhead one, they just total up all of their costs, tack on a profit markup, and give that to the customer's price. And what's happening is it's ignoring your overhead costs in that markup formula, and uh, that's, where, that's where we get tripped up. That's where a lot of these prices get, get wrong, where you're not making the profit you need to be uh, making for your business. Um, I'll just spend a minute here defining each one of these. So yeah, again, cost is the cost that you incur when you do the job. It's your labor, your stone base, your pavers, your materials, etc. cetera. Um, that's fairly self-explanatory. Overhead is the tricky one. This is where the, it's like your, your own pay, your owner's salary, it's your trucks, your fuel, your taxes, your advertising, your tools, and your job trailer, etc. Those are the overhead expenses that you have. They're the costs that you have to be in business, whether you sell that next job or not. You still have that cost. And we have to figure out how to cover those costs when I give a price to a customer for that span of time that I'm going to be spending doing that project. Right. So then profit is one distinction I want to make about profit. You know, we all know what profit is, but one distinction I want to make about it is gross profit and net profit. Uh, when a lot, you know, when you hear people say, "Hey, I made 50% profit on that," they're usually referring to gross profit. Right. Gross profit is before your overhead costs are deducted out. So, um, net profit is after your costs are paid and all of your overhead expenses are covered during that time. And owner's salary is not profit. The money that you take out of the business to live on is not profit. Profit is after everything is paid, including whatever you're taking out of the business to live on. Yeah, I often talk to contractors and they'll, they'll be telling me about this great project they are on or they just sold and I'll say, you know, are you excited? You, you know, you know where, where are you at profitability on this job? Oh, 50% uh, gross profit. Hey, Mike, what are you going to profit net on that job? And they don't know. They don't know, yeah, They exactly. don't know. And in and, and some cases, some of these contractors are netting zero or 3%, uh, yeah, yeah. right? And a gross profit 
is not money in the bank because you still have to pay all those bills for that overhead. The money in the bank is that net profit. That's what the owner might be able to put in his pocket, maybe distribute as bonuses or buy other equipment to right. improve the company, right? And what's tricky about it is when you wrap up that job, you pull off the job site, you go cash that check, it looks as if that 50% gross profit really was profit in there. Yep. But over the next weeks and months, your truck payments come due, you have, a, you have a rental, your shop rent comes due, whatever. It's like it just gets sucked out. And, and most of most contractors have no idea where that line is as to like, what did I really make on that job after yeah. I paid all those costs? Yeah, and that's the true difference between being uh, a business owner and being a guy that's putting pavers in in the backyard. A lot of landscape contractors started work doing their own business after working from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they saw their seats from the dealers and they saw these add up. And they said, oh man, they, he sold this job for 20 grand and it only cost him 15 to do it. There's five grand left over. Mm -hmm. But once we start realizing that that overhead cost, right? And that, when you get dialed into those overhead costs, that's truly when you go from a wheelbarrow and pickup truck to a business owner, a true entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of, you know, the whole, this whole subject is kind of revolving around this overhead cost thing. Yep. You know, that's where, that's kind of the black box here for most people. And that's what we want to try to make uh, logical and rational and easy to understand here today. So here's an example of what pricing a job should look like. It's essentially, you guys are probably already all doing this. Like you're adding up your labor costs, your material, your subcontractors and equipment for every job that you're doing. But what's different here is we are marking up those costs by that 21.2%, which is just a placeholder. That's different for everybody. But we're marking up my direct costs to also cover my overhead costs, and that gives me my break-even. That break-even number is what it truly costs me to produce that job as a business, and the net profit is not what's between 17,460 and 12,000, the net profit is what's between 17,460 and 14,550. That is the real profit. And this is why we say that you cannot use your competitor's numbers or someone else's numbers off of a Facebook thread for your own business. Like when you ask, hey, what should I charge for my business? No one can tell you that answer except for yourself or someone helping you, you know, break out your company numbers and figure that out. Because that 21.2% uh, markup in this example is different for every single company because every single company has slightly different overhead structures and costs of doing business. This is why it's, it is unique to everyone and you, we can't just be, oh, you, what's your formula? Yeah, cool, like I use that in my business too. Like, it just doesn't right. work that way. Um, and that might sound like, well, how on earth am I gonna find that number for my business? Well, fortunately, it is pretty simple to find. Basically what, to find that number, we have to build what's called a company budget. And this might be where your eyeballs are glazing over, you're like, nope, I'm checking out. <laughs> but what we've done is uh, put a lot of work into trying to make this as easy as possible with tutorial videos to show you how to do this. Uh, it's not that hard. It should take an hour or so for you to filter through your numbers and plug this all in and get the answer to this. Um, and winter time, now's the time to do it, right? Yep. So what we've done is we've built a tool to help you do this where essentially you just plug in eight values into this online calculator. Like if you've ever used a calculator to calculate a car payment, same concept. So you plug in your values, uh, it'll prompt you and show you and tell you what it's asking for each value and it will tell you exactly what your overhead uh, markup is to cover your overhead costs for your business. Um, that tool is on our website. You can access it at syncedup.com at any time. And then even better, once you've built your budget, there's a second calculator that is populated with your budget information where you can plug in like your actual cost of your materials for a job. You can come up with a price for a job. You can plug in your cost for materials, your how many hours it's going to take you, your uh, subcontractors, etc. And it will tell you what you need to charge the customer for that job based on your own unique overhead recovery markup and your profit goal. That is what's really cool because it's not like you have to become a spreadsheet guru yeah. to do this. You can essentially just like follow the prompts and find the answer for your own business. And this is really where we say accuracy and efficient with, with estimating. A lot of people see square foot pricing as just fast, but ultimately it's just a cheap way of estimating because you're not taking the time to really get a, an accurate estimate, right? So these tools that you've created really help uh, with getting that estimate accurate and efficient. Yeah, and one point to make about these two calculators, once you've built the budget one time, you're good for the year, unless you make mm. a dramatic change in your business. You only need to do that once per year. Uh, and then you can use the estimating calculator to bid each job accordingly based on the budget you've built. 
Weston, I really like how you set the tone on uh, an estimate true, uh, that's been truly priced for profit starts with a company budget. But contractors hear the word budget. <laughs> we probably and, lost half the viewers already, right? And, and, and they hear the word diet. Quite yeah. frankly, like I'm not gonna get to eat pizza. Like I want to eat the fun food. Yeah. I want to. I don't want to eat vegetables all day long. You know, what kind of advice could you give the viewer that, to help them get in the right mindset to ultimately start this budget, right? Because this is a, you know, ultimately starting is the hardest thing, right? Like, yeah. To start. We just got to get them to start, and once they do that, yeah. Once you have the momentum, you're good. They're going. Yeah. So, what kind of mind help can you help with the mindset yeah. to get them to start? So, I don't know if you ever heard of the broccoli chocolate rule: attract them with the chocolate and give them the broccoli they need to grow, or whatever, you know. But from the chocolate aspect, like why you why this could be exciting for you and actually like motivate you to I'm going to do this for my own business is because I'll just ask you this: Have you ever wished you could have new equipment? or hire an office admin to take some of the workload off your uh, back as you're in the crunch time of each season, whatever. Like whatever it is that you wish, the vision that you have for your business, if you build that vision into your budget, that is what you'll become. Meaning like if you budget for that new equipment, if you budget for that new office admin, whatever it is that you need, whatever you dream for your business, that's what's gonna become reality. The budget will, um, you, you steer the ship in that direction, That budget will produce the overhead recovery dollars and the profit dollars to enable you. It'll produce the funds so that you can go buy that new equipment and you can go hire that new uh, staff member. And essentially, this is kind of the keys to unlock like from scarcity to abundance. Like I can never afford the new equipment. It's just like my area and you know, all that. We hear those excuses, right? And, and this is the key to unlock that to where like, Maybe I can't, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to build the budget as if I own that equipment. I'm going to build the budget as if I hired that staff member, and I'm going to go sell my jobs on that pricing model. Right. There you go. You're, you're, you're dreaming it. You're writing it down, and it's becoming reality for you. This is a, that, Before you get to the broccoli, I want to share a quick story. I got yeah. a contractor, um, kind of just him and, and two, two employees that work for him, and he kept year after year renting equipment because it's less expensive, or what he used to say, cheaper. Right. And I'm like, no, Mike, like if you bought the equipment, you're actually saving money. Right. Because the equipment is 650 bucks a month on the payment where the rental payments. What did you spend this year? Right. He's like, oh, you're right. And then and then it goes back and talks to his wife. Right. Him and wife kind of this is their baby, this business. And that's their means of income for their house. Right. And, and, and she's not comfortable with this big note in this thing. So he starts to actually build this into the budget, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. And now. It's, it's making sense. And now several years later, he's owning several pieces of equipment and his business is truly flourishing and he's continuously growing year after year. That's a perfect example of like, you guide the ship in the direction you want to go and it becomes reality, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, one thing I kind of glazed over is like what the budget will give you is tell you exactly what you should be charging per man hour. It'll tell you exactly what your overhead recovery markup rate should be. It'll tell you exactly what your net profit is going to be. Uh, so it's like really clarifying. It's like almost like, lifts a bit of a weight off your shoulders so like okay now I know yeah you know? yeah yeah and yeah so I really love that story that's a great example of what we're talking about here yeah the broccoli yep so as far as like the the broccoli side of the budget like so the vitamins right one analogy I've come up with is like okay pretend you're driving imagine you're driving down the highway at night no lights on you're just following tail lights of other cars as you're, like, you're guiding beacons of where you're driving if the car in front of you goes down over the bank you're going down over with it you can't see where you're going Right. And if uh, you're driving a heavy truck and a little car zips around a sharp curve, you're, you're not following that sharp curve. The point I'm making is like those taillights you're following in the dark are like your competitor contractor in your neighborhood and their pricing or that Facebook comment that says, hey, I charge 25 bucks a foot and you charge 25 bucks a foot. So there's no way that you can use your competitor's price and know whether that's right for you and your business. You have to go build your own budget to discover the truth for yourself. And the reality is, is if you kind of continue to do this kind of guesstimating or using your competitor's price, it's literally as if you're driving blind. Like if you don't have a budget, you're, you're guessing. It's literally as if you're driving blind and you're jeopardizing not only the success and the profitability of your business, but frankly also your, your family, your team members, et cetera, and, and your ability to serve your customers with that A plus five star service. Weston, we've learned a lot today. I want to thank you for coming and, and bringing your insight around this topic of pr uh, price for profit. What ways can contractors and viewers reach out to you and really take this to the next level? What ways can you help? 
Yeah, so we built two paths that you can take. We had the basic path, which is essentially those online calculators, right? Um, and this is what they look like. This is an, a screenshot of one of them. Essentially, you can just plug in your numbers here and it'll help you price your jobs profitably. Uh, there's tutorial videos in there which kind of prompt you through and guide you through, the, through how to use them. Um, then the supercharge path is that app that we were talking about that we built uh, over the years of running our own company. And what this app does is that it allows you to do budgeting, estimating, scheduling, job costing, and invoicing all underneath one umbrella. You can use templates and production rates to really speed up and make your mm. processes super efficient. Wow. And it also provides like automated job costing. So you can see exactly how you made out on every single job automatically. And so, you know, the calculators kind of solve the knowing your numbers problem for you. The app does knowing your numbers plus speed, efficiency, you know. So it decentralizes your uh, systems and processes from out of the owner's head where the owner's the only person that ever, can ever produce a bid for a customer to where you could hire a sales guy and plug him into the system and that guy could produce accurate prices for your job, for your, for your company, and not everything is running through you as the owner anymore. Yeah. That's a great point. This is really a, a, a systematic approach yes. to running the whole business, right? And um, once they get going with this program, how can you guys help there? So basically, um, you can book a demo right here at this link. And once you get going with the program, we actually like build a company budget with you for you. Mm. Like we walk with you hand in hand, live on a Zoom call, building your very own company budget. So if you are you know, wanting to just simply know your numbers, those online calculators will be great. Uh, and if you're kind of a guy that likes to figure things out for yourself, but if you want to couple up knowing your numbers with systems and processes for efficiency and also get some help and some expert insight into like, hey, is this right? And ask all those questions. That's, the, that's, the, that's part of the supercharge path. Weston, I really want to thank you for joining us today and bringing your insight. I want to thank the viewer for tuning in today. I hope you found great value in everything we talked about today. I employ you to spend the time this off season to get ready for the upcoming season with systems like this or, uh, and processes to help you grow. Please reach out to your territory manager because like me, all of us at Unilock truly have a passion in helping you grow your business. Whether it's on-site help, a quick phone call, or putting you in touch with an area expert like Weston, we're truly here to help. Thanks for joining. We'll see you on the next one.